October 1962. And it's the second playoff series in the last four years for the National League. 1962, we ended up tied with the Dodgers. So we have to go through uh, uh, two out of three playoff. Now I'm pitching the third game. We lost in four to two. Hit four to two, but the Giants counted out so often during the season, bounce back again. They have a rally rolling in the ninth. They have all the pitchers ready on that team to save that two runs. For some reason, uh, they left Stan Williams. Pitch to Orlando Cepeda and Willie McCovey. Orlando Cepeda greets him with a fly to right field. A very unintentional walk forces Philippe Ballou across and the Giants lead. We score four runs on that, on that inning. We end up winning the, the champion. And now it's on to San Francisco and the World Series with the New York Yankees. I remember it, uh, going back to San Francisco. We can't bring the airplane to the gate because it was a mob. I think the whole San Francisco city was uh, at the airport. The day after winning the National League pennant, the Giants returned to San Francisco to begin the 1962 World Series against the New York Yankees marking the first time Dominicans played in the Fall Classic. Ya empezábamos a ver primero los primeros dominicanos en Serie Mundial. After defeating the Dodgers in that three-game playoff, right at Dodgers Stadium, we had to play the next day a day game against the Yankees at Candlestick Park. It was, we were really tired. Playing against the Yankees, you know, everybody want to play either for the Yankees or against the Yankees, especially in the World Series. Era un toque de queda, como dicen aquí. Todo el mundo yendo al juego, esto y que los otros, comentarios por donde quiera que uno iba. Mickey Mantle and Elston Howard of the Yankees seem confident. And so does Philippe Ballou of the Giants as he warms up. The Dominicans excel throughout the series, with Felipe and Matty Alo making brilliant catches in the outfield. But by game three, the Giants found themselves down two games to one with Juan taking the mound for game four. Juan Marichal, high-kicking right-hander, will start for San Francisco. Whitey Ford, winner of the opener, will go for the Yankees. I get to pitch the fourth game in New York. I think I was pitching the best, the best game of my life. I strike out Mickey Mantle twice, and we were winning two nothing, going to the fifth inning. I was hitting. So Alvin Dark told the coach to give me the suicide squeeze sign. Tom Holly was coming from third, so I have to try to bunt that ball. And by trying, it was a ball four. The ball was going to hit my ankle. And I went down just to get that ball and put the bat on the ball. And instead of putting the bat, I put my finger, my index finger, and the whole nail came off. And that was the end of 1962 for myself. We ended up winning that game. Chuck Hiller hit a grand slam. A long drive deep to right field. Maris can't reach this one. It's gone. Davenport scores. Matty Alou scores. The Yankees won game five, and the series returned to San Francisco. But rain delayed play for three days. When the series resumed in soggy Candlestick Park, Felipe and Orlando rallied the Giants. Orlando Cepeda hammers the ball into deep right center. Mandel and Maris race for it. It's in between them for extra bases. And the Giants win 5-2. to The series is tied at three victories each. And now the title rides on the final game. It's D-Day at Candlestick. Six months of baseball now spirals to a climax in just one game. The tense struggle moves into the Yankee fifth without a serious scoring threat on either side. And that brings Tony Kubek to the plate with the bases loaded, nobody out. Kubek hits sharply to Pagan and 
and it's on to first for a double play, but Skyron scores to give the Yankees a one to nothing lead. When they score that run, I'll I, I never forget telling Orlando Cepeda, I said, Orlando, you know, that run is going to be very difficult to overcome because the wind was blowing, it was like a gale blowing straight in from center field. Matty Alou leads off for the Giants in the ninth. Beats out a drag bunt. With a score one to nothing, he represents the tying run. I made a perfect bun I make to first, and uh, so I say, well, I did my job. Mighty Lou get on base. They tried to bunt Philippe Lou. I was asked to bunt, and I, the ball, I, I, I had to believe that the, the wind really blew that bunt foul. It was so, such a strong wind blowing. After one bunt attempt, Philippe Ballou swings away. Boyer is relieved that he missed. Alvin Dart let me swing the bat because Clay Boyer was almost underneath my bat, and I fouled off the pitch. The third pitch, they threw a fastball up and in, and I struck out swinging. I, I really felt bad about that. Ralph Terry also strikes out Chuck Hiller. Now Elston Howard goes out to talk to Terry while the menacing Mays steps into the box. Willie Mays came up to bat with Matty in first. He hit a ball to right field. Mays hammers the ball down the right field line. Maris with expert feeling. When the ball hit the ground and stuck there and give uh, Roger Maris the, the opportunity to come and grab the ball, throw it to Bobby Richardson, and Richardson threw it to home play. It was a well executed replay. He threw the ball high speed, one, one hop to the catcher. And Mario Lou was being held at their base. He would have been out, no question about it. A lot of people say, oh, no, Marty could have, could have scored. There was no way. The relay stops him. He has to go back to third while Mays continues to second with a double. And thus, the tying and winning runs are in scoring position. Manager Houck talks to Ralph Terry, a tense situation where a base hit could change the picture. Willie McCovey was the next batter. Everybody thought they was going to walk McCovey because uh, was Orlando was next and was a right-handed pitcher on the mound. He took the chance like a good gambler. Almost does. Willie McCovey hits a tremendous curving drive to right. But it's a foul ball, and the fans groan. McCovey slashes away again. A sizzling line drive. I never, I never saw a ball hit so hard in my life. It, uh, one of the hardest ball I've ever seen, and Riot Richardson, who, by the way, was playing shallow right field, playing second base at shallow right field, and that was the end of it. The Yankees win one to nothing on a brilliant clutch effort by Ralph Terry, the hero of the 20th World Championship won by the New York Yankees. It could have won either way, because if that ball was a little bit higher, I think he'd end up in the ocean. <laughs> could not believe we lost it, especially with a land drive like that. 